using a 40-year-old Universal logo, but still retrofitting it to, say, Comcast. Starting your movie with a butt sketch. What is this, a Minions movie? Pretending X is a valid character for a phone number. Knock at the cabin fever. This is a terrible multiple choice quiz. First, a cucumber could be both a fruit or a dessert. And second, a helicopter is not a type of airplane. It's a completely different type of aircraft. Suddenly I'm back in seventh grade arguing with Ms. Madsen about nominal infinitives and I promised myself I'd never go back to that day. It's okay. Relax. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna learn about you for a little while. I'd love to take a sin off for M's use of possible metaphor here. She's playing God, but grasshoppers are powerless as test subjects. Is it love or dominance she's asserting? One problem, the movie never really solidifies around these ideas in any meaningful way. Sure, we see the symmetry when they are the ones trapped here in a bit, but that's all on the surface, and the movie never really takes the time to unearth anything deeper or even resolve the metaphor. Writing out two inches when you've already shown you can just write two, and I'm not just sinning your inconsistency when, I'm sinning your loss of efficiency. Also, this energy level metric is going to be almost impossible to graph. I'm not from around here, but I was hoping to make some new friends. Everything about this encounter cleverly uses bias and editing to build tension because we know nothing of Leonard outside of his size and have already flagged him as a menace. It's such a good setup that I'm willing to take a sin off, but don't get used to it, movie. It's the last one you're getting. But also, none of this makes him approaching Wen like this any less of a strange decision. And he ultimately uses his training as an educator to lull Wen into a sense of security. Regardless of the fact that we will learn that he is supposed to be a good person later, this is still very f***ed up. I don't talk to strangers. She utters while talking to a stranger. There's Daddy Eric and Daddy Andrew. Wen goes from scared to talk to strangers to full expositional conversation in less time than it took Maverick to do the Kessel Run. All the Disney Channel shows only have one dad, too. Firebuds has entered the chat. And yes, I know that character has two moms, but newsflash, two moms is still not one dad. What's your favorite movie? Kiki's Delivery Service. A coming-of-age movie with themes about learning independence and community based around mystery and magic? That fits with this movie perfectly. What a coincidence. You're my friend, Wen. No matter what happens, I want you to remember that. Right, because knowing everything you already know about the job ahead, you thought spending a little time with Wen would be the key to making the home we're going to force one of your dads to murder the other one part go down smoother later. There's character optimism, and then there's we need a scene to set the stage and add some mystery and ambiance, so f common sense. Probably Han Shin, either black or white, and because they thought the concept of compartmentalization was safe enough to cushion children if they were in an accident. That last one is a sin. Give the f kids some seatbelts and airbags. Knocking seven times because you read that number in the book of Revelation instead of stopping at three knocks like a civilized human being. Make them go away! My response every single time another live action remake of a Disney animated film is greenlit somehow makes it into the script. There's a woman carrying something that looks like a pick with a chain and a mallet head at the end. Rocking up to a house with your present apocalyptical weapons all out and expecting to be let in. And what's worse is that the only way this makes a lick of sense is if scaring the shit out of the deciders is somehow part of the world ending procedures. I'm calling the police now. No, you're not, because you're in a horror movie. And the only place with poorer cell reception than a horror movie is the f***ing moon. And now that I think about it, NASA probably even has that on lock. Hey, um, we know you can't do that. None of our phones get service out here either. Thinking that your phone service has to be the same as everyone else's. We all know there are more than four major carriers of the apocalypse. Goddamn door, we're coming in either way. This need to be inside is all for show. The whole end game is you giving this family a serious talking to and convincing them to watch the news a couple of times, all of which could be done through the door. I mean, in a pinch, this all could have been handled over Zoom. I have a gun. You brought it here. Yes, no, it's in the safe in the back of the truck. I left it there instead of securing it in here because we needed a mid-movie tension set piece. This movie's not gonna get itself to 90 minutes. The aggressive jiggling of this doorknob like you can scare a door unlocked. It would be nice if the not scary, scary people would just chill the f*** out. Damn! For not being menacing, they are certainly menacing hard. If the not scary, scary people had any chill at all, they would be halfway through their first sacrifice already. Choosing to break in through doors instead of these clearly easy to enter windows. It didn't have to be like this. Preach into the choir. It's been over a minute since we last checked in on him and Redmond is still struggling with the weakest doors this side of the Maginot line. Leonard wastes time breaking through just this part of the door instead of knocking the whole thing down because the movie needs a few more seconds of Weasley getting an ass whooping. For some reason, seeing Eric injured blasts us into a past meeting with Andrew's parents where they too assaulted Eric. Okay, that didn't happen, but it would have given a reason for us to be dumped here in the middle of awkward tea time. That's my mom asking how it's going. How the f can you know that? Can you turn that down? Disrespecting strawberry shortcake, Barry in the big city. This orange blossom hatred shall not stand. Also, why are they even watching this? It's only available to stream on Peacock. Oh. I don't hate anybody. 
I do have conflicted feelings about this door. This joke has the advantage of failing both for being too lighthearted for the moment she's going through in the world of the movie and for not being funny to the audience at home. But we had no idea you were a single sex couple until we got here. I get it, but describing people as single sex instead of same sex makes it sound like they procreate through osmosis. Our choices make our destiny. I almost got that tattooed. Almost getting that tattooed. My name is Sabrina. I live in Southern California. I live in a town you've probably never heard of. You know, for a group of people feeling the pressure and immediacy of a job they need to do, they sure do like to string the audience along, don't they? Well, I think you, you guys already know my name is Leonard. The only thing worse than exposition via a blatant introduction lineup is exposition via a blatant introduction lineup of stuff you know we already know. You know, this get to know you stuff doesn't matter at all. Preach. We shouldn't move them until we make our proposal. A proposal that somehow none of you have mentioned yet. It's almost like the movie is trying to stretch a good premise for a short film to fit a feature length film. I have, um, I have two cats. Their names are Riff and Raph. Stealing your pet names from the show Heathcliff and the Cadillac Cats. Your family must choose to willingly sacrifice one of the three of you in order to prevent the apocalypse. I already promised not to take another sin off of the movie, so in response to Dave Batista being so f***ing good in this, I'm adding a separate Batista sins counter and I'm removing a sin from that. And you will only live long enough to witness the horror of the end of everything, and you will be left to wander the devastated planet alone. Wait, so if I don't do this, everyone else dies, but I keep the people closest to me? So no one else to bother us? Was this supposed to be a difficult decision? If we wanted to hurt you, we would have used duct tape instead of rope. Wait, what? How is that a matter of distinction? I mean, I guess you get some hairs pulled out with duct tape, but can also get rope burned. What the hell does this even mean? And why didn't he just say, if we wanted to hurt you, we would have done it already, like a normal thriller movie cliche, so we could send that? So by who? By what? Are you gonna answer that? They will not. For every no you give us, we will unleash a plague for the sins of humanity. Quick question, what happens if you just don't unleash a plague for the sins of humanity? Will you make a choice? Every single one of them shakes their head no and answers this question incorrectly. The correct answer is yes, I will make a choice. A choice not to say kill my loved one. You had a chance to loophole and you blew it. Oh sure, move Wen to the lap so that she doesn't have to watch, but I have to sit here and take it in. I want a lap too, movie. Don't you look away from me. Vanity. Upgrading your camera techniques. When the flashback starts, Leonard has his back to the main door, but when we're finished reminiscing, his back is to the kitchen. It's all in service of this nice dramatic pan across Wen and Andrew. That would be fine if the movie didn't play it like Leonard was standing there the entire time. The Catholicism Wow campaign doubling down with this Buddy Christ lasso mural. You can pray if you want, I won't make comment. Telling someone you love that it's okay to think or speak about something important to them because you've decided not to make fun of them for it for the time being. Help me take Redmond outside. Cover him with a blanket. Wasting a blanket. These three horsemen of the apocalypse color-coded keychains. We get it, M. You like symbolism and detail. Chill. Please this watch the TV. Had one of America's favorites. I'm not even going to The Forced M. Night cameo? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we all caught that without you lingering on this channel for so long. Also, why land on an infomercial? Wouldn't finding a news network be quicker and better evidence? And yes, maybe it's because Leonard knew which channel from his visions or some sh**. So I'm blaming whatever higher power is producing this breaking news positional convenience. The U.S. National Tsunami Warning Center has issued a cautionary advisory to British Columbia, Canada, and more than a thousand miles of coast along the American Pacific Northwest. Good thing they warned British Columbia and Canada. Winds to a sizable wave of 15 to 20 feet in height. 15 to 20 feet? That's it. Garrett McNamara does not even get out of bed for 20 feet. Do you even 100 foot wave, bro? I'll stay and we can talk about doomsday. Offering a conversation about a villain from Batman v Superman as if it's any kind of incentive. And we have footage shot minutes ago from Cannon Beach. It appears to be from a social media live stream, so I understand it was broadcasting live as it happened, but how the hell did you guys get it so fast and get permission to air from someone who is clearly dead now? Look, I know we're mostly idiots as a species, but there isn't one person on this beach who maybe realized that as soon as the tide went out that Far, they should get the high ground immediately? I just need a moment. When you've just witnessed a murder and then a natural disaster, I just need a moment shouldn't mean a flashback to carpool karaoke. Boogie Shoes fits into the rest of this Eric's Jams playlist about as well as I fit into my jeans every January. Having said that, I love the chemistry these three have on screen. I can't help but root for them. Still, I've already taken my stance, so I'm somehow removing another sin from Dave Bautista here. Jonathan Groff isn't singing You'll Be Back in this scene. Although by the end, he will be killed by friends and family to remind you of his love. La -da 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 -da. Hey, oh, going here? Here? I'm too close. That doc might have rusty nails. Eric, come on with your rusty nails. One parrot is a rule follower and the other is a free spirit cliche. Also, Andrew isn't taught a hard lesson about thinking a good attitude can protect you from tetanus. Let's go here! 
Oh, come on. <laughs> Chastising someone for saving you several hundred dollars. When I was a kid, my dad used to say to me, trust in something more than you. I'm sure your dad was thinking of a ritualistic murder cult when he said that, so good on you for following through. Eric walks out with his hands firmly tied in front of him, and then three seconds after he sits down, his hands are tied behind his back. If Sabrina is that fast with rope knots, her calling isn't to be in a death cult, it's to be in a rodeo. Did you see Redmond's f***ing face? He was just crazy. Considering you were behind him the entire time before he put the mask on, I'm not exactly sure what you're basing this on. And also, no, it wasn't all that crazy. Crazy. He looked scared to offer himself up to die, which is honestly fairly reasonable. Wen sees Leonard to the right of the tree and proceeds to move uncovered in the same direction as him. This makes no sense for a kid as smart as her. It's as if the script was aware that she needed to be caught. Also playing hide and seek instead of running away. Redmond is the guy from the bar. Redmond? More like Red Herring. Also, that's right, one of these random cultists got into a bar fight with him in the past. Coincidence? Providence? Either way, it's convenience. Didn't he tell us about this cabin on the message board first? Wait, is she doubting now? I mean, I know the intent is to keep the audience doubting, but earlier she said, It's really f***ing happening. When she saw her vision play out on live TV, and that doesn't seem like something you dial back from. This is a picture of some of the kids I coach. This year the boys had a record of three and eight. Asking someone to murder a loved one for a team with a losing record. Maybe you'd sleep better if you could see each other easier. Being able to look each other in the eye doesn't make them any less tied upright to wooden chairs, but the movie wants us to view this as compassion. Cutting to a blatant reminder of the attempted subtext and hitting your audience over the head with it, AKA Shyamalani. I don't mean to rush you, but we're gonna ask for your decisions very fast now. Saying you don't mean to do something and then immediately doing it. Ah! Framing plants and thinking that's art you hang on the wall. Trying to pull a bald fist through a tight space instead of opening up your fingers. You're not a raccoon that found a marble in a trap, Andrew. I'll move her into the other room so they don't have to see her. Why not put her out with Redmond? Why are we segregating your murder buddy's corpses again? It isn't a f***ing plague. It's a news report. Thinking cable news isn't a f***ing plague. Paddington I get, but Wen's insistence on watching Adam Agoyan's 2009 erotic thriller Chloe is a bit disconcerting. Cutting your hands free, then immediately dropping the knife instead of using it to either cut your feet free or as a weapon. Get away from my family, you <laughs> This whole escape sequence works really well. The fact that Andrew has trouble walking because he has been tied to a chair for like 24 hours is a great touch, along with Leonard and Sabrina being slow to respond and kind of bad at this because they have zero experience doing what they are doing. The whole thing builds until Andrew finally gets the upper hand and it is all very exciting. Great job, Dave. Andrew? Andrew's survival instincts need a bit of evolutionary polish. He knows Sabrina is out here coming after him, and instead of occasionally spot-checking where she is, he just keeps looking straight ahead so she can sweep the leg on him while he's trying to get in the car. What the hell, man? Did they spring for auto-heal windows on this bad boy? Because Sabrina clearly either cracks the window or leaves an imprint on this swing, and yet in the next shot, it's gone. Conveniently malfunctioning, tension-building gun save conveniently malfunctions solely to build tension. I believe you were chosen because your family's love for each other is so pure. Drop the weapon and move away from Eric or I'll show you I was chosen to put a bullet in your head. I wonder if people in real life speak in action movie retorts in the midst of trauma like they do in the movies. I bet they don't, especially if they weren't even in the room to hear the line they are supposedly responding to. <laughs> Whatever her plan was. Get your drunk ass back to your seat. Movie cuts away from its climax to tantric us with another flashback, but this time it's an entire f***ing montage. The attack at the bar, the surgery, learning to box, and buying a gun. M. Night is like the preschool teacher reading a story to the kids and stopping to point out all the pictures. See the homophobia, kids? And over here we see how fear could lead to violence. Ooh, and look at this serious I'm gonna shoot a gun face. Keep an eye on Leonard. Yeah, if he does anything. Instead of getting us out of here, I'm going to go check on my theory about Redmond, because I think it will add some nice texture to the mystery. Bromo Mont Avenue doesn't exist on any map I can Google search because Ron Weasley hit that sh with a magic spell, making this all canon in the Harry Potter universe. I hath said it, and so shall it be. No, I'm not a murderer like you guys. Well, except for that one time a few seconds ago when you shot that unarmed woman running at you. He broke the window. He got out? You mean this window? You thought Dave Batista, sorry, Leonard escaped through this window? <laughs> you guys are dumb. Turn on the TV if you want to be convinced. Boomers and Gen Xers. And let's be honest, millennials too. Well, now I know it's faked because the sound of those airplane explosions should not be reaching that camera at the same time as the visual is. Checkmate, death cult. It was hard. Excuse me. Excuse me. 
it is it's hard, hard to, describe to describe the images, the images we are seeing. that we are seeing. They, they fill, fill us with, with disquietude, and, disquietude and, horror. and horror. Memorizing your vision so you can perform an impromptu monologue later that you had no idea was coming. I can't even remember what flavor of ice cream Nicole Kidman was eating out of the turtle shell in my dream last night. I know when someone's lying. If Natasha Leone showed up right now to solve this mystery and it was revealed that this was all just an episode of Poker Face, I'd give every single sin back. Come on, Universal. Just leave it on Peacock for Comcast's sake. Leaving this much firewood uncovered. You know what I love most about teaching kids? They believe everything you say. The hell? What kids are you talking to? Kids I know argue with every single thing that comes out of anyone's mouth. Parents, teachers, coaches, even YouTube channel narrators. This wine and cheese basket has been sitting out here overnight, and they are not currently dealing with a mildly intoxicated Yogi Bear. Are we supposed to believe that he just hates Merlot? There was something in the light. That's what's got you convinced? That you saw a light flash in the mirror? Not the planes falling out of the sky, not the synchronized news position, a f***ing fractal reflection? They remind us of all aspects of humanity. Redmond Malice, Adrian Nurturing, Sabrina Healing, Leonard Guidance. Yeah, that covers it. All of humanity can be summed up as either malice, nurturing, healing, or guidance. We cracked the code, guys. We're done. Let's go get ice cream. I'll bring the turtle shells. See, you can tell it's super meaningful because they are moving around in a circle together like people do when they are in a passionate argument. This flash forward has got to be like 15, 20 years in the future. Andrew is aged well, and by well, I mean almost not at all. Thinking the future of electric automobiles is all the same models that exist today as if these companies don't plan to turn these things over like they do with cell phones. Did you hear him save everyone? Yeah, he did, but how it all worked is still a cabin-sized mystery. Leonard said earlier, Ultimately, whether the world ends or not is completely up to you three. A statement that, on its face, sounds like Wen would need to be a part of the decision as well. Did her deliberation occur off screen? Did she submit an absentee ballot? Look, I've had a few old tree houses in my time, and there's not a single one of them that is staying this dry inside when it's raining like this. Also, there's no way these curtains are not covered in mold. Get the f out of there now! God just straight up destroying the evidence of his crimes. There is no route or secondary highway in Pennsylvania designated as 70. There is an interstate 70, but this is not the appropriate red and blue interstate shield. And I think we'll sleep better knowing that justice has been served on that front. And the water just stopped rising. Writing a movie where the ritualistic murder cult spouting seeming conspiracy theories is proved correct and honorable in 2023 sure is a uh, choice. Diner does not contain a David Dunn watching this news coverage. M. Knight takes one last opportunity to rub our nose in an orgy of conveniently placed evidence that these four were who they said they were, even though the movie had already removed all doubt several times over. <laughs> movie ends by taking on and off its boogie shoes for all the some time. I'm not just a horse, I'm a horse's ass. Look at that manly walk. Can I talk to you for a little bit? I don't talk to strangers. I've mastered the ability of standing so incredibly still that I've become invisible to the eye. Watch. Loser. Can everyone come in here, please? It's morphing time. Hi, Eric. When? <clears throat> and Andrew. My name is Sabrina. My mom died a week ago, and she didn't have an easy life. She had DID, which became extreme at the end, and dementia. And my father died when I was a baby from starvation uh, because he had psychotic depression. And he starved himself, which I'm sure was just as pleasant as it sounds. Lynn, my nose itches. What do I do? Eric? You okay? You're gonna be okay! Say the goddamn words! You're gonna be okay! You're very polite. You're a good person. I'm a good person! Eric, look at me. I'm the captain now. What are you doing with that, Leonard? Ah, uh, sometimes I whittles the future. They're the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Written by Bojack Horseman. Some men just want to watch the world burn.